UM so campaigners are warning that Britain has become a surveillance state given the amount of CCTV cameras that they say are spying on us. Now, over 5 million cameras are switched on in the UK. We are one of the most watched and uh, most surveyed nations in the world. Birmingham is the second most watched city in the country. Now, the government says that they're there to keep us safe and critics argue there's no evidence that CCTV cameras reduce crime. So what do you think? Does it bother you that you are being watched? Uh, 08081 00955. That's 08081 00956 and 81333 on the text. Start it with WM. Let's have a chat to Mark Johnson, who is from Big Brother Watch. Uh, Good morning to you, Mark. Good morning. So why do we have such high levels of surveillance? And and what what information are they actually recording, Mark? Well, we've seen uh, the growth of the surveillance state, as you pointed out, um, over the years. As you mentioned, the UK is one of the most surveilled countries in the world. That's second only to China, and we now have one CCTV camera uh, for every 13 uh, people. And as you mentioned, um, there is criticism that that these CCTV cameras actually do little to deter crime. Um, And it's it's quite well known that certain types of crime, such as uh, violent crime, knife crime in and around cities such as London and Birmingham, has risen. And yet, as we've rolled out CCTV cameras, it's had little effect on that. There's been no deterrent uh, impact at all. Why? Because you'd think that if there's that many cameras and they're watching everything that everybody does, that they would do something. Yeah, I, I, it, it, it appears that it has no no clear impact on, on, on those types of crime. Of course, it also has no impact on other, other types of crime which might take, take place online. Um, I don't think anybody's suggesting that we should not have CCTV entirely. It's about um, a necessary and proportionate response. What we don't want is to get into a position where somebody can't walk down the street without being filmed. Well, why does it matter? Um, I think, we, you know, we hear time and time again the argument, if you have nothing to hide, you have nothing to fear. But that argument does very little to address the kind of growth of this surveillance state. And it's really reliant on, on the government and our authorities not to abuse the powers that, that come with that, uh, you know, responsibility that they have. And um, evidence shows that, that people, if they know they're being watched, they act very differently. And, and what we're getting into is a situation where this technology will impact on law-abiding citizens going about their daily business and yet has no impact on keeping us safe. I, I can't understand, and maybe I'm just being thick, Mark, but if I'm walking down the street and I know, and I know there's cameras there, I'm not going to change what I do just because they are there and I will just think, OK, well, if anything does happen, they're there to keep me safe or they're to, they're to see something you know, going amiss, go, something happening that's wrong. I, why are people worried about being watched? I guess, I guess it, there's, a, there's a broader point here, which is what kind of a society that you want to live in? Do you want to live in a society where you are a kind of a serial number, you're just, you know, you're being filmed the whole time? Uh, or do you want to have that right to privacy? I mean, the right to privacy is a fundamental right uh, written into, into UK law. Should it not be possible to, to not be filmed if you don't want to? You know, is it, is it necessary that we have to have a camera pointed at our face the whole time? Shouldn't there be you know, uh, sections in public where we aren't being filmed. And I think it's a kind of broader societal question. But ultimately, if my home is burgled and the offender is caught because of CCTV, that's got to be a good thing? Well, of course, and absolutely, you'd be, you'd be in your right to have, uh, to have uh, private CCTV cameras on your home. Um, you'd have to be mindful if you did um, about whether they are capturing any footage which is in public because you have a responsibility under data protection law. Um, but, but as I said, it, it, it speaks to a broader point. It's whether we want to be filmed the whole time. It's whether we want to have a camera pointed at our face the whole time and whether we want to have that right to privacy so that when we're walking down the street, we know that somebody isn't looking at us all the time. So what other information are these cameras picking up? I mean, uh, as well as our movements, of course, they're seeing those, but what other information are they getting and how is it used? Well, they're used publicly and privately, and of course, um, they they can be used in a court of law uh, to provide evidence when a crime has been committed. There are fallibilities there. The footage can be grainy, and it can be unclear as to uh, you know who, who who the individual in question is in the footage. Um, so there are legitimate uses, but as I said, it's it's, it's about proportionality uh, and and using them where they're absolutely necessary. I don't think that 100% coverage in all of our public places, all of our streets, all of our train stations is absolutely necessary. Who pays for all these cameras, Mark? And and you know who who keeps the up, who looks after the upkeep of them? 
Well, um, of the figure that you that you mentioned previously, I think it's around 5 million CCTV cameras that we have in the UK now. Um, actually, a large number of them are privately owned. Um, we, you know, a number of people will, will put private cameras on their on their properties, on their doorbells and so on, as we've seen. Um, uh, you know, a, small, a smaller proportion are, um, are owned by local authorities. They're also used by, by police in certain circumstances. Um, and, um, and as we know, they're, they're growing and more and more people are using them. Now, you know, as you just said there with these doorbells, we, we do seem to like CCTV in a way, don't we? Because more people than ever before are, are buying those ring doorbells. You see who's coming to the door. You can answer the door without even actually being in the house or you can talk to somebody and home security systems, uh, you know, they're sky high as well. So in a way, we do like it if it means it's protecting us and if it suits us. Yeah, of course. People will always take um, precautions where they can, where they can, you know. Especially, and we're not blind to the fact that, that crime levels are are rising in the UK. But there is a really important point here that with with the private use of these cameras, there can be accountability issues. You know, I should really know who's filming me. I think it's within my right to know who's taking a picture of my face. And it's important that if that camera is is uh, privately owned, that there, there is a level of accountability so that I know who's effectively collecting data about me. Yeah, and that is the case, isn't it? That if you have them around your house, you have to be careful of where they are kind of like zoning in on. I mean, you don't want to be, I wouldn't want to, be, I don't care if I'm walking down the street and somebody's recording me in Birmingham, but I wouldn't want my neighbours to be recording me. Well, exactly. And that's a really important point. And that's where the accountability uh, you know, area comes in, and it's important to think about things like GDPR, which you know applies when using uh, private CCTV if it's filming a public place. And um, so, really important questions that, to think about there. Isn't it the case, though, that for the great majority of the time we're being listened to? I mean, we've all got these smart devices. We've got things in our house that apparently are listening to conversations and so on and so forth. So we're under surveillance quite a lot of the time without perhaps knowing it. Well, that's absolutely right. I mean, we have seen, um, you know, police and security services grow the power that's been, you know, at their disposal in recent years. In 2016, the government brought in a piece of legislation uh, called the Investigatory Powers Act. Um, that gave uh, police and security services a whole load of, of powers to basically to spy on us. Um, there are a couple of important considerations here. One is, as I said, it's entirely reliant on us. And, you know, believing that the government won't abuse that power. And we always have to, to check that power and make sure that it's not being irresponsibly used. The other thing is, bit by bit by bit, our privacy rights are always being eroded. You know, I, we, we spoke about the kind of argument that, you know, people will use where they say, if you don't have anything to hide, you don't have anything to fear. But, but if we just keep chipping away at our privacy rights, what kind of society will we live in in 100 years? OK, well, listen, it's fascinating talking to you, Mark. We've got lots of calls on this, so let's go to some of them. Uh, that is Mark Johnson, who is from Big Brother Watch. Uh, let's chat to Steve. 